Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods. Before we jump into Build Science 301 and all things control layers, I want to take just two minutes to highlight something that deserves more attention in our industry, fire protection. We talk a lot about air, water, vapor, and thermal, but what about fire as a control layer? That's where FirePoint from Arklin comes in. FirePoint is an advanced fire resistant sheathing that's engineered to give you serious performance without slowing down your build. It offers up to 53% more fire resistance than code requires, helping to slow flame spread, buy time for evacuation, and give first responders better access when it matters most. This is a solution designed for builders and architects who want real fire performance without sacrificing efficiency. The base of FirePoint is real CDX plywood, so it's lightweight, easy to install, and it's compatible with any cladding, so you're not locked into one finish or system. FirePoint is especially valuable in wildfire prone regions, but honestly, it's a smart choice for any project where safety is a priority. And when we talked about smarter building science, that's exactly what we mean. Products that both elevate safety and performance within a modern wall assembly. We're not just building to code anymore, we're building to face future challenges head on. So if you're designing for resilience, specifically fire resilience, stall flames and save lives with FirePoint. I'm Matt Reisinger, stay tuned for more right here on Build Science 301. All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 301. This is our third module. We're gonna be talking about peer foundations. That's a little bit of a specialty, but I've done several of those and that you see those around the country and insulated concrete forms. Again, a specialty, but they're built all around the US. Yep. Where should we start, Steve? Well, let's pull up those details, right? Yeah, peer foundation. You know, one of the things about foundations that I found is in a lot of communities, the good properties are all used up, <laughs> right? So we're getting some pretty uh, steeply sloped properties yeah. or properties where maybe it has partial basement and partial pier. That's, and that's what that detail comes from. I call them hybrids, right? And ICF, we've done a number of them. Um, we have a couple more coming up. So they're, you know, they're they're weaved in and out. A good example solution. from our Build Show uh, fans is the very first Build Show Build House, uh, which was in Missouri. You designed yep. Jake Bruton Build. We did a full series about it. That was a hybrid approach, and there's certainly some pier foundation. This is in that, that detail. So. That's, this is pretty much the detail. So Steve's right, with slope foundations, that's where I've encountered this type of uh, detail here in Texas. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna see it more and more commonly. Then how about insulated concrete forms? Do you see that more in one part of the country than another, would you say? Yeah, they're all over. It's, you know, like I, I can speak very um, intelligently about New England because I'm from there. You know, when you start doing those systems and we just did one ICFs, so you came out to yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. But. Uh, it's really hard to kind of insert that. We're they're they're grumpy old guys that want to do things the way they've done them for the last fifteen years. It's like, wow, well, do that. I just I would well, cast a wall. There's nothing better than a ten inch wall. And then you know I go out to Colorado and everybody does an eight inch wall. They're like, why are you wasting all that concrete? I'm like, I'm not wasting it. Come to New England. God, you can't. If I said eight inch wall, you Did think you I'm right? asking them to make it out of Kleenex or something, right? <laughs> instead of concrete. So it's definitely regional. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's there's pluses and minuses to every system out yep. there. Um, we're doing a house right now where the whole basement is gonna be that, the first floor is light deck, and it has an interior pool that the whole pool is out of the wow. ICF. Cool. So Very there's, cool. you know, systems that you can make work. The challenge. Yeah, let's go to the challenges because there are definitely some challenges with both. Doing it right. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're here to talk about. Yep. Doing it right. So, peers. Let's talk about it. Right. The thing about peer is we have a lot of places where we can introduce air mm -hmm. into that system. Yep. We have a lot of places where we have surface area that's subject to thermal loss, vapor transfer, air transfer cross there, and then of course, water getting in the system. The one benefit we have is distance. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Yeah, there's we less can put that in a flood with, zone. You're not gonna put a, uh, you're not gonna worry about your basement getting flooded in this house. No, <laughs> not at all. But there's definitely some additional challenges when you think about a pier foundation. Yeah, especially comfort. Because mm -hmm. um, you have a, a very point. small 
dimension there yeah. to do, you know, what might be, in this case, zero degrees versus 70 degrees. That's a big delta on a small right. amount of space. If this was an uninsulated basement, it's probably still 50. Going off to the ICFs, you know, probably the thing there is get somebody that's installed them, somebody that understands. Like most foundation systems, you get challenged with water, you get challenged thermally, you get challenged with vapor, yep. and of course, we have radon coming through the slab. And one additional challenge, you're leaving these forms in place, right? You know, the insulated concrete form is the form that stays in place. Yep. So now we've got this issue a little bit with the water of where do I make this wall waterproof, right? right. Do I make that wall waterproof back here mm -hmm. where the concrete wall is or do I make it waterproof or what's my, I should say my Alamo, as you like to say, my last yeah. line of defense. So that being said, let's look at some solutions for those. And to piggyback that, you really wanna make sure who your ICF manufacturer is and check with them. So if you're spray applying a waterproofing, you wanna make sure it's compatible oh, with that ICF manufacturer. Not You're not gonna eat the foam or deteriorate the foam. Same is true with peel and sticks as well. You could yeah. make a uh, big mistake by putting an asphaltic based product up against the foam that it's gonna eat. So you yep. need to be a little cautious about that, you're right. Let's talk about solutions. Water, we solved that. Yep. We solved nice. it by distance, that's pretty, pretty nice. simple. Air, you know, one of the things about air here that when I was doing this detail, that's pretty interesting, and it took me back to the days of at Building Science. You know, I'll draw this over here. We have a wall and then we have a floor. Mm -hmm. If I took that and rotated it, I would have a very thick wall and a very thin floor. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, is these are pretty much the same. Yeah. It's just orientation, Yep. right? Now, the difference is I'm probably not leaning up against that wall all the time, but I will be standing on there. Yep. So I have a comfort issue because I have direct contact there. Mm -hmm. But as far as air sealing, thermal and vapor, everything that happens across here is pretty much everything that happens across there. So what I'm hearing you say is, why wouldn't we build that floor the same way we'd build our wall? Is that where you're going? That's exactly where I'm going. So when you look at thermally, we have a stud wall, we have some cavity insulation, and then we put continuous rigid insulation on the outside. Mm -hmm. Here, we have a thicker stud wall, yep. in this case, floor joist. Yep. We put some cavity insulation, and then because we have that bottom cord that has a thermal break, mm -hmm. we continuously put some rigid insulation there to take care of that thermal break. And then we also, uh, maybe jumping ahead, but you've got your air barrier uh, on the outside as well. And we've used a lot of Huber Zip system, but there are other options right. for air barriers as well. So just like that wall has the air barrier on the outside, your floor now has that air barrier on the outside as well. And you can't actually let me erase that line a little bit because you can see here, I showed a little piece of tape and uh, that's yeah. exactly what yeah, we did. did. Yep. So we connected our zip to the plate mm -hmm. and then out here we have a couple beads of sealant that yep. connect our plate to that. Love it. So in effect we have component one, component two, component three is the tape, component four. Ankle bones connected to the knee bone, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the song, sing along, right? But that's how we deal with thermal control there. That's really good. <clears throat> I love that. Steve. As far as um, we talked about water, vapor, right? I mean, the outside condition here, if we get a little bit of vapor up there, you know, we might want to be cautious in the southern climates if that gets really cold because of air conditioning maybe have an issue in that cavity. So that would that would tell me I should be a little cautious about let's say a vinyl flooring, which yeah. is a zero perm, a plastic floor basically. Yeah where there could be some issue with vapor hitting that and not being able to dry through, and all of a sudden it's condensing and maybe causing some microbial growth or something underneath yep. that. So hardwood floors, no problem. Hardwood floors are, you know, true hardwoods are vapor open. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, carpet would be vapor open, but just be a little cautious with things that can't dry through there. Yeah, we want that moisture. Get it up in the room and just deal with it in the room. Yep. There's a lot of systems out there where we can um, deal with that yep. up there. And as far as insulation goes, you know, we talked about that continuous cavity insulation. So problem solved. 
with the pier. It's a really good solution. And frankly, when I saw that house that you guys built on the Build Show Build House, it really made that light bulb go off in my head. I hadn't done that detail before. You made it, you and Jake who built it, made it seem really simple, right? You just had to think about it. How do I make sure my plumbing's not sticking down? How do I make sure my floor depth is enough that everything I need services wise, whether it's MEP, really M E or P, right? Mechanicals, electrical, or plumbing is all within the envelope and isn't messing with this. And then when you sheathe that bottom side with, uh, I think you happen, to, you happen to use Zip R on that project. Yes, we did. Uh, but it could have been rigid insulation and sheathing and you know whatever. Yep. The point is that detail where you think about, hey, how do I build my wall? It's the same thing except we're tilting it down. It really comes back to that uh, white paper that you and I both read a long time ago that Joe Stiebrick called the perfect wall. Yeah. What is the perfect wall? Well, we just tilt it and now it's the perfect floor and angle it and it's the perfect roof. Yeah. We'll get and, into that in, in future episodes. And that's exactly, I mean, when I talked about the wall and floor, I can still remember the day of looking over Joe's shoulder and where he took the drawing and just rotated it at 90 degrees and said there's really no difference from a floor to a wall. Makes perfect sense. Right? So, I mean, Joe was impeccable about making the most complex things Really simple. Very, very simple. Which is what we're trying to do here for you guys. And that's exactly By the way, right. if you don't know the reference, Joe Stiebrick, we kind of think of as the godfather of building science in America. Uh, Steve worked for him for many years. I've gone to every training I possibly can of his over the years. He's amazing. We actually, uh, by the time you watch this, have given him a Lifetime Achievement Award at the first inaugural Build Show Live. He's just an amazing uh, man with a wealth of knowledge. And if you're interested in further general reading information about building science, uh, their website, buildingscience.com, incredible resource. Uh, let's talk about insulated concrete forms next. So very similar to a concrete wall, right? We put up some kind of waterproofing here. Mm -hmm. Waterproofing goes, make sure we cover that footing. Yep. And then we have here our protective mat. Yep. Right. And, you know, a lot of times it's uh, vertically oriented fiberglass so we can drain that water down. Sometimes we have it here. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the water. We're doing a project right now. We did two things, which um, one of which I've never done before. We have a l very deep section. It goes down about 13 feet into the ground. We weren't sure with water. So before we even tore the house down, guy came out with an excavator and dug a 14 foot trench mm. to see, are we gonna hit water? Are we gonna hit rock? What's down there? Yep. There's no way to know. So the builder wanted to do that. And then secondly, during excavation, you get a really good snapshot of, was there water here? Is there water here? Does it drain really good? Mm -hmm. And we're right on track with everything there. It's a nice dry site, but there's things that you should do in terms of due diligence to understand what's happening below grade. Because these two pipes are probably two of the most important pipes you could potentially put in your house. That's right, great point. Right? Yeah. And they're very expensive to put in after the fact. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Talk about a, uh, a factor of 10 or 20X or 50X. Exactly. exactly. Air barrier, again, you know, we could put in the Stego there. That helps stop our radon mm -hmm. there. It also helps from a vapor transmission perspective. We mm -hmm. keep that moisture down here. Moisture in a vapor form, who cares? It's not hurting anything. If it condenses, you want it to condense in an area like this that's filled with stone where it eventually goes into a pipe and gets taken away. That's right. So we solve that. And then, you know, one of the beauties or one of the um, enhancements that the ICF people sell is the fact that we have rigid insulation there and we have rigid insulation there that is the actual formwork. Of yeah, the and, and even built-in studs, frankly, on the inside of those, so that really you could, in theory, just go right onto the drywall yep. uh, or right onto the drywall to that ICF and you're done. Yeah. And, you know, this one I chose to elevate it a little instead of showing the insulation down here mm -hmm. because one of the beauties of ICF, and we did this, this was the detail out by the Riverside Project where we actually had to take it down because of our frost depth. Mm. Um, and it went down considerably um, deeper than our slab. Oh, so the beauty of the ICF is you could take this deeper into the ground and then you could just put that slab up because you're thermally broken yeah. along that whole vertical surface. That's really nice. 
So makes a lot of it sense. works quite well. Put in the uh, horizontal insulation I showed there, but in that project, if you remember, that was where I was first introduced, and I think it was your first introduction to gravel. That's right. Yeah. The insulated gravel the insulated underneath. Gravel. There. Yeah, pretty cool. So there's a lot of materials out there that are part of the solution. And not any one of them is exactly the right answer or exactly the wrong answer. I tell everybody, um, you know, when you investigate a building, materials don't fail. The installation or the way they were installed, 100%. that's what fails. 100%. So. Good details, Steve. I like it. And remember, we've talked, talked about this already. These are a solution. There can be other solutions, but we wanted to at least show a solution that Steve and I have used, that we've proven, that have been done. So these are two excellent and proven solutions. However, it's time to go above grade on the next one. We've got episode four coming up, Steve. We're going above grade. What do we do? You know doing? anything more favorite of mine than basements and foundations? What's that? Above grade walls. <laughs> episode four coming up. Two by four, two by six, framed walls with sheathing, and those same walls with insulated sheathing. With that being said, like my friend Joe Steberg would say, it's not rocket science. It's build science. Don't forget. We got quizzes. We got booklets after this. So the fun doesn't stop at the vibe board. That's right. So at the end of each episode of Build Science 301, you're going to have the opportunity to take a five question quiz. Answer all five of those right, and then go through all 11 modules on Build Science 301. And our team's going to send you a certificate that says that you passed Build Science 301. And we have that for 101 and 201. Right, Steve? There we go. Don't forget, this is totally free. There is no charge. I think you should really take the time and make sure you get recognized for your efforts and your time. Get that certificate. This is a really big deal, and this is a good foundation for the rest of your career. Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and U.